women matters in the end of march 2023 last time we talked about change and this time we might talk about the change in our personal lives what we envision or what we had already in our life which changes we had what experience we have with it and how do we think we can uh, encounter the changes which are likely to come but before the normal usual check-in and i would like to start with vienna yeah we had a lot of change in the weather today <laughs> uh snow mm. which is well not that unusual but still it's getting cold we had it nice and warm and the animals are just very greedy at our feeding place so Maybe it will stay colder for a couple of days, so we don't plant our uh, usual uh, spring planting yet. Um, yeah. I'm still reading escapist literature, which is nice, about time travel. <laughs> And yeah, uh, I pass on to Hanneli. Thank you, Monia. I'm Hanneli, I'm here in Cape Town. And I'm, I'm curious about what you're reading, Monia. I love time, time travel as a subject as well. <laughs> and timeline jumping and quantum jumping. So uh, I think it also realigns with change. Um, yeah, we had a beautiful drive along the coast yesterday, uh, the whole day. It was just incredible. And what I discovered was, as we are talking about change, is how every different small little village had a completely different energy. And it was just something incredible to experience. Uh, it's places I know very well, but I haven't been there for quite some time. But to do a round trip like that was really beautiful. And the ocean was always next to us on the left. And this vastness and the depth of the ocean is something that always is very close to my heart. So it was really deeply inspiring. And to stop here and there and to have ice cream here and something to eat there, it was just, yeah, it was lovely. And um, to experience the smell of the ocean differently as well from where I am here. I'm on the western side of South Africa's coast, and we were on the southern side mostly. And it's incredible the change of the color of the water. It's turquoise blue there. It's just beautiful, like Mediterranean. And here by us, it's not like that. Um, so just to notice that subtle changes in nature was just beautiful too. And the, the spirit of the place as well. And I will pass on to Gertra. Thank you, Hanneli. I'm Gertraud in Germany, in the middle, and um, talking about personal change. I lost five and a half kilos lately, and I'm uh, <laughs> doing a, a training uh, for a fitness training. Um, yeah, so I've never, ever done any resistance training or anything like that and somehow I wanted to do that I, it was just it really really spoke to me our eldest uh, co-student is 76 <laughs> so I'm 66 so so I have way to go and it's it's just amazing like what happened and it's just two times a week for 15 minutes yeah and then walking a lot um, but this has been a change I didn't expect it's just there's a lot happening I'm wearing trousers I didn't couldn't for years and so it's that 
And another change is my brother's second baby is born two and a half years, uh, weeks ago. So he's very happy. And today is his uh, defense for his habilitation. So that is another like completion of, of a time. And yeah, so a lot of things happening mostly in my personal life. And I went back to a company I was working with. I, I think I told you about for a year, I was doing a transformation thing in, in a company. And after many months, I came back and everybody was happy to see me. I was like, <laughs> this was so nice. I, I really loved it. And and I came in and they had a changing desk and they had a, a lot of things done that they wanted to do. And it was more by diffusion than, than by like planning. But um, so I could see right away that something happened just for me being there. So, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I would like to interfere and do a change because I hear thunderstorm coming and I would like Gertra to make you host in case I fall out. And OK, so we are starting with change, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I pass on to Christine. Um, good morning, I'm Christine in Carlsbad, California. And uh, yeah, I've had a lot of change. I've missed being part of the group for the past. I missed two sessions. Um, I was in Florida uh, at the end of February and missed that Monday. I had a wonderful visit with my brother, sister, and my sister-in-law. We had a great time. Um, went to the Kennedy Space Center uh, on the coast of Florida where they launch all the, the rockets and the missiles. And, and we actually got to see uh, a space launch. SpaceX was sending up a payload um, and we stayed up till 1230 at night <laughs> to see it go up. Um, we're still many, you're many miles away because there's nothing close to the actual launch pad. But it, nonetheless, you know, it's cool to say I saw space, uh, SpaceX go up and uh, the Space Center uh, was really wonderful regarding the history and the science and all of that. That was great. Wonderful visit with my siblings. We get along. It's easy. You know, we 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 just kind of fit together and, and it's uh, easy to spend time. Uh, and then I went and I saw my best friend from high school. She had moved with her husband. They're retiring in Georgia and they moved to Savannah. And so they have a new home there and went to spend some time with her. And um, then last Monday, Tom was actually in the hospital because since the beginning of January, um, we've been dealing with his health. And I can talk about that when we get into change because it has been a change. Uh, but it's been like one thing after the next. Um, it feels like he has aged 10 years in a couple of months. Um, things can change quite quickly. Um, but, you know, he's gradually getting better. Hopefully he will get back to his baseline before all this started. But uh, it's been daunting and may, has made both of us feel pretty vulnerable um, him because he's the one going through it and me because uh, I have trouble imagining, you know, functioning fully and taking care of things without him around. Um, so that's that's a scary proposition. So um, that's it for me. I'm just glad to be back here and, and see all these lovely faces again. And I will pass off to Beatrice. <clears throat> Hello, um, I'm back in Portland. Um, I have a cold, so if my voice is strange and if I look droopy, that's why. Um, I was in New York last week and for a month. Um, and the day before I traveled, I got a cold and I traveled with a cold, which I think was a mistake. I mean, I wanted to come home and I, I didn't really want to be stuck in New York sick, but um, but I had congestion and I think the plane, my, my ears have been blocked for a week. 
um, and I can't seem to unblock them. I went to see a doctor yesterday and he gave me some exercises to do and medicine recommendation. And he said, I don't have an infection. So it's just time. Um, but it's annoying because everything is muffled and I'm tired and I feel kind of heavy. Um, so that's that's my current situation. <laughs> I've been home a week. It's been hard because of being sick and readjusting um, to a very different speed of life here. Um, especially since the last weekend in New York, I the last Sunday I was in New York, I was in six different parts of the city in one day <laughs> and uh, running around doing a lot of things. So um, it's it's a very different um, speed. Um, let's see. I should be here for a few months now, which will be nice. Um, it's been such a like a a year of running around um, and not being in one place for more than a few weeks. So it'll be nice to be in one place for a couple months. And then I am going back to New York again in June. Um, while I was there, I got another job. Um, well, it's a it's a it's a design job to do projection work for a theater show. So it's a you know one off project. Um, but I'm excited about it. And um, so I guess I guess my new lifestyle is going to New York every couple of months. Um, I don't know if I like it, but there we go. Um, yeah, I think my mother has arrived on her computer. That's what it looks like. So I'm going to see if I can send it over there. If she's here yet. Maybe she's not here yet. Has everyone else gone? Except me. Okay, well, maybe change, Heidi and... Yeah, the change, <laughs> I, I, I um, followed up what Monia says with weather. It's changing outside, heavy wind, and if at least it rained, because if these lovely flowers in my garden don't get rain, they will die soon, you know, because it's such a beautiful thousands of flowers but you know they need something from from underneath i try to water them a bit but it's never like you know like rain so this is a change there are other changes around we can talk about that later um i have a friend here and she is very busy in helping me and she gives me um inspiration to do the things too, you know. So she offered to to paint together with me my whole flat. So in a few days we will start to do that because it's really, you know, if you have a wood stove and it's all all black up there. So and I haven't done it for about ten years. So it's time that it gets some white touch. And so we will do that. I'm quite happy. That I have to say I I feel well and. Um, that's it. And now Victoria is here, and I give over to Victoria. You look like a like a, a, a monk. <laughs> That's my aspiration. <laughs> That's my plan. Okay. I, Already I, I, externally, you are, you are. You can tell us how much you are internally later. But we talk about change, and how it it is in our life. Okay, I'm sorry to have missed. Um, I heard you on the on on the on the phone, but um, I'm I didn't catch Monia because I checked in when Hanali was speaking. I think so. I hope to hear more from you, Monia, because we've missed you. Um, there you are. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. So, uh, oh, this is the check-in part. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm very tired. I, I, and the more I sleep, the more tired I get. So um, I may stop sleeping, see if I can get some more energy. <laughs> um, I've, I've been doing a lot of, a lot of study lately, more than usual. Well, if that's Im even imaginable um, there, it seems like um, death is the focus of everybody right now, death and the afterlife and things like that. So um 
so Beatrice hasn't has been too busy and not well. So I've been um, a kind of surrogate student, um, <laughs> and um, really, really amazing things going on right now in terms of um, that whole field. But it's very it's been very exhausting. Um, on the fun side, um, I've uh, I I have been more social than I usually am. So that that's um, the monk part doesn't work with that. Um, <laughs> um, just not not things that I organized, but um, but my neighbor across the street is a very he's a very, very lonely person. And um, he's sort of decided that I guess I'm like his favorite person on the planet Earth. And um, so it was his birthday on Saturday and we went out and we had a lot of fun. It was just very I don't know why, but I, I, I sort of go into my juvenile mode with him and we have a lot of fun. Um, and um, <laughs> maybe I can show you a crazy picture of his birthday party. Um, and, um, and then for some reason, I've gotten very involved with the, the Harvard alumni um, in my area. And, and I've been to it. I didn't, I, in the olden days, I never went to any of the Harvard alumni events here in town, but um, somehow one thing led to another. And um, so I'm going to them all the time. There's stuff going on constantly. And they have they want me to organize some cultural um, events. And I'm involved with the Harvard Women Alumni. Um, so it's it's like a whole new world that I didn't even know existed because I, I was always too busy. But the truth of the matter is, um, so I'm glad we're talking about change. Um, I'm really, really concerned because the the I had this very, very um, these very successful concerts a few weeks ago, as I think you know, I can't remember the chronology. Um, and 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 then total silence from the from the new director. I sent her a, a follow-up email to tell her because she wasn't at the second concert to tell her that I had a standing ovation and sort of report in on the experience and and to remind her that there was that I have a postponed concert that's been postponed repeatedly because of the pandemic and asking her if we can schedule a date and absolute nothing. I mean, not, not she didn't even dignify my report with a, oh, thank you very much. We'll get back to you someday. I mean, nothing. So um, so last night, suddenly I felt really frustrated and um, I just forwarded the email, which I noticed was two weeks old already. I forwarded it and, and with a little, you know, pseudo friendly thing about, oh, maybe, you know, your inbox is so hugely full that, you know, you didn't see this and I hope you can read this. Um, so we'll see what happens, but I have a, it's, it, I've, it, speaking of death, it's just really hard. It feels, um, I really want to keep playing. I really like, I feel like at this age, um, I'm sort of, it sounded like, well, we can talk about it because it sound, I came in when Gertrude was talking and it, it just feels like um, now I feel like I really like am in a new phase and I can, I, I there's a lot I want to do with my music. And so it's, it just feels weird if they cut me off. Um, obviously I'll have to look for other opportunities, but it's just, a, it is a transition. So I'm not sure, I, I, you're, you've all checked in, obviously, I, I, I want to hear ammonia some in some form eventually um so i guess um yeah i'm done so we can <laughs> sorry yeah, thank you thank so you. many of you have already named change which every uh, changes which are going on so what i'm interested in is not only the sort of change you are undergoing but how you live it what is happening inside and outside in all the quadrants let's say you know, uh, so who wants to start and then we see how we go on. I can resonate with Gertrude because I also lost, but I didn't change sizes amazingly. I'm just lighter. And I can very much resonate with Christine because my husband is also, uh, un has undergone some changes uh, his knees don't work anymore so uh, it's a hard time standing up 
and walking around is, yeah, it's, he, he still walks around, but he's there nevertheless. And yeah, so I'm sort of reminded that it's, there is a deadline for our being together, a deadline. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have been very careful going around with each other or how we uh, relate. And there's also a, a certain kind of humor but we both are very much aware that it's just a couple of months, years, I don't know. And this is why I read escapism literature, as I put it in the chat, uh, because, yeah, we don't want to get depressed, but, to just to see how your body just has a certain limit. Uh, and he still has all his teeth, so it's it's not that bad, but uh, it doesn't matter. And he just got another blood uh, reading, but it's perfect. So actually he should be healthy and bouncing around, but of course it, he isn't. And I can feel with you, Christine, how this really upsets you on many levels. It did upset me, but yeah. So maybe you could uh, go on with your side of the story, how you managed with how your husband is. Sure. Um, and, and there's been so many changes over to almost three months now. Um, and it feels like each thing that came up, it was another change to get used to. So that was part of it. It's not like it's been just one thing. So um, uh, the easy part, I guess, for me for change was just altering daily routines. So, you know, things that he and I would do together. Now I was doing them by myself and that was okay. Or I would take extra time during the day to check on him and see if he needed something because he couldn't move around much. Um, and that part wasn't hard, really. Um, I started my career as a nurse, as an RN. So that part of me is still definitely uh, is, is definitely there. So kind of caring for him in that kind of nursey kind of way was not hard. Just, you know, the, um, I guess just hard emotionally seeing him so vulnerable. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's scary to think about where things are headed and we all know where they're headed eventually, whether it's, you know, hopefully 20 years from now, but uh Still, it, it's uh, it's daunting emotionally to be thinking about um, change and loss. You know, it's loss. He's uh, Tom is trying to do gradually do some of the things he was able to do before, but it's really a slow process. It's just so slow. So there's a lot of patience uh, involved in recognizing that it's like two steps forward, one step back. And so emotionally, that takes a toll every time you have to have a, a setback. So I guess I've been coping by, um, you know, trying to do things that I, I still enjoy, whether it's taking a, a walk, um, you know, listening to music, trying to find something to do with Tom that we can enjoy together. Uh, just, I guess, be more conscious about making sure that I add some pleasure uh, every day to what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, I think that's the main way I've been coping is to try to balance out the uh, the pleasure factor with all of the um, stress and strain. So health is health is a conundrum. It's, you know, you do all the right things and it doesn't necessarily obviously lead to the right outcome that you want. So I think that's about it for me, change. Uh, 
Thank you, uh, Christine and Monia. I'm actually really touched by what you said because I was watching twice now with my friends and by myself a movie uh, on Netflix called Here Today. And it's about this writer who has a regenerative type of, um, of not Alzheimer's, it's more, more something else, but he, he starts to forget stuff. And he has only so many words left to speak. So it was really deeply touching. So it's on a different level. So it's more on a mental level and from an awareness level, but it was so deeply touching and how the woman who was helping him, which he just, which, which he just met uh, briefly before, and she started to live with him because he had nobody else to ask to stay with him, but she offered. But to see that process happening in front of your eyes is deeply touching. So I just want to recognize both the beauty and the vulnerability of what you shared. It's, it's really also me watching that movie twice now in a row in one week was you go back into yourself and ask a lot of existential questions about yourself again and again and again. And um, what really uh, helped me to process that was also like you just said Christine it's my spiritual practices walking in nature at the ocean go for long walks along the beach um, music dance playing with my daughter's dog touching the animal was really uh, and and what I miss where I am now was is is um, flowers and in the property, we don't have much flowers. And I miss that side and vegetables that's growing. Because for me, that always keeps me so connected to life itself. And I think those are the things that I miss uh, when there's such changes where you're in a different environment from what you're used to. My daughter also, she went through lots and lots of change. And I'm also glad, Christina, you brought up the emotional side because it's, it's that thing to be there for others, your loved ones and to still stay centered and not going into empathic overload because that, will, that drains us. And then, to, then the importance of staying centered in your own energy is deeply, deeply uh, important for me personally of my own experience. And um, yeah, so yeah, I think for me also, I just wanted to share something that my daughter shared with me. She was listening to a podcast on her way. She's lecturing now uh, at an art university. And she listened to a monk. Who, yeah, well, the man was a monk, uh, Victoria. And he shared that um, he starts his day. Or what he learned from being a monk for a few years in a monastery was how he changed his life from nine to five to completely something different. And it was so interesting because I lived that way for quite a while now, more than 10 years. In the morning, he's in receptive mode. And in the afternoon, he goes into more the doing creative mode. And she said she wanted to share it with me because it's a complete change of how we perceive time and how we spend our time. But it's how I've lived my life for quite a while. I was really fortunate to do it in this way and to schedule my things like that. But it is that space of being open to whatever is emerging and then whatever you receive to do something with it so there's a balance between being and doing in some way and it was just beautiful in the way she said he shared it I would love to listen still to that podcast myself but it just brought me back to change again I think it's also happening in the world with where we're moving away from that type of living to more we can we can organize our lives in the way we want to which I think is a big thing currently and um Technology and all these things assist us obviously to do that as well. So I'm complete for now. Thank you. Well, all of this fits in perfectly with um, with my activities <laughs> recently with all of these death. Um, because the, the 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 conference I was just at. Um, that's why I wanted to say, Monia, um, your uh, well, I, I don't, I was going to call him your hero, but maybe that's totally wrong. Um, but I first heard his name from you, um, Andrew Holacek. Um, he was one of the speakers at the conference. Um, it, the, the conference is called the, it was called the art of living and dying. 
and um, held at the Menla Institute, which is a um, Menla is the name of the healing Buddha. And um, it's, it's an institute started by Robert Thurman, who's like the preeminent Western Buddhist. I mean, he's a very close friend of the Dalai Lama and he's like, he's, he's kind of like the, I don't know, the spokesperson for the Dalai Lama and the rest of the world. Um, very, very brilliant, crazy man. Now he's, now he's 88 or something. And he's, um, he just talks incessantly, just stream of consciousness. <laughs> and so he's, a, he's fun to listen to, but he, but it's kind of hard to learn from him at this point. Um, but what I really loved about it that I thought was so beautiful and where I feel like I, I mean, I, I need to really revisit all the recordings and everything and, and take it in because it was so dense, but um, and a vast, vast array of different speakers, but, but what came across very strongly was that was actually, it was, it was a life affirming event. It wasn't that, that, um, and, and apropos of what you just said, Hanali, um, it was a big, that how we live our lives was, a, was actually a bigger part of it than how we, um, how we die, or there were some things about, you know, life after death and things like that, but, but those, you know, were all kind of speculative and weird. Um, but what was really profound was, um, was seeing how the living in the, living within the sense of um, how, how death, if you embrace death as a part of life, and as something that is not um, something to be feared or like or like slamming into a brick wall or whatever, no matter what you believe about life after death or not, um, by by bringing it into your consciousness now in the midst of life, it changes your perspective on everything, and then you actually learn to live much more abundantly with a kind of fullness and embracing every moment. So actually, what you said, Christine. Um, well, and you said it too, Hanali. The um, but the you know the things that nourish the nature and music and all these things, and in general, just even what you say, Christine, about your um, you know your relationship with your siblings. Um, <laughs> I was coming up the hill in the car, and I I said to my friend, I said, "Boy, I would I you know give anything to have a relationship with siblings like that." Um, but but to see if if we see that 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 everything is temporal and impermanent. I mean, I'm I'm sort I'm seeing now the how the the sense of impermanence instead of being something negative, like everything's going to pass away, and you know, and 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 you're trying to like hang on to what we have. We're hanging on to our health. We're hanging on to our um, relationships. We're hanging on to the things we're used to. Um, that if we if we hold everything lightly. And um, and just embrace each moment as it comes, with this sense that that everything's passing away, and we but we have this moment, so why not celebrate? It's really I don't know. It's very I I feel really very um, very changed just by the experience of hearing all these different people. And what I really loved is there are people from all over the world. So the the day that made the biggest impact on me was um a day when they they talked the speakers were in um in south america and um really amazing how they they are so holistic in the way they look at the world and at life this very bound bound to nature and and the sort of natural processes of life and um and this kind of this beautiful humility sort of in the face of life anyway I, I won't <laughs> I'm about to launch into a lecture myself so I won't say any more for now but I just wanted to bring that in I think because it's it's for me it was very profound because I have a tendency to hang on like I don't want this ice cream to end I don't I don't want every day when I finish my breakfast I think oh it's it's over now it's gone <laughs> now I have to wait till lunch um so it's 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 a good lesson for me, especially just this sense of of holding things lightly and and knowing that everything is impermanent. So you know, live to the fullest, and then it then it's almost like it's almost like every moment is a celebration, and there's something really exciting about that. And also, a big thing they brought up was curiosity, which I love that because um, that that was in the like life after death kind of thing of 
um, life is so exciting because you never know what's going to happen next. And I love that, that sense of um, what's around the corner. So curiosity as a kind of a source of energy that instead of dreading change, you're kind of curious, um, you know, what's going to happen next? You know, it's like, it's like everything's a big adventure. So it kind of, I don't know, for me, the whole, it all brought out this sense of almost like the childlike wonder of how you, every moment there might be some really amazing thing that's going to happen. And um, what will that be like? And what will I do then? You know, so I don't know. It's, it's very affirming, actually. OK, I've said quite enough, I think, for the moment. I didn't get to talk at the conference, so it's all <laughs> bound up. Yeah, I want to, to jump in here because of the lightness and the joy and uh, things and not cling to what should happen or what I want to happen and these things. I'm presently learning. Yesterday I had a wonderful meeting with a man and we went around in a garden and in an art um, um, exhibition. And the whole time, like child ch children, we played together. You know, I don't even know him a lot. I mean, I saw him three or four times, but it was so nice and it was so um, inspiring to be able to be with another person in this playful light mood you know I really really it, it's for me a change because I noticed uh, in these times of insecurity my own future his future if he probably wants to go away in somewhere with uh, the um, doctors without borders uh, something like this so there is no uh, real perspective no for for meeting again and again and repeating this but I just stayed and it was like a miracle, you know, and, and you see here the, the spring colors and everything. And we went into this garden of an artist where the, he has many sculptures, mostly in iron. And the, from man, many of them came out flames, fire, you know, and then there was water. There was a, 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 a stream of water, which unfortunately isn't enough for making the, the, the monument sing because they should sing with the water, but there was, the water didn't arrive. And it was, a, how do you say, like a miracle, like in some way, uh, like a dream. Also the, the monuments were mostly in iron, that this little bit too hot, but then there was the water and you could, pass through a gate of iron and to go down into the water. And then there were the rocks up there. I mean, really, really amazing. And I'm so grateful for nature and for everything which is happening, you know. And who knows what happens next, you know, in our lives or in our relationships or whatever. And so it was a big change for me to be able so to be so light-hearted, let's say, as I have the tendency to be heavy as an Enya type four, you know. <laughs> and I have the suspicion that uh, my real character is the light one, the joyous one, and not the the other one, which is, it feels like a, a so, super structure somehow pressed on, on me. And I identified so for such a long time with that. And I had the feeling yesterday, uh, I can decide not to be like this, you know. And it was a good change. And you see, I'm still happy. <laughs> I'm kind of curious regarding Beatrice. Um, I remember when I was your age, one of the things that, um, really affected me was that my friends, it's kind of like everybody's going off in their own trajectories, you know, and people who I thought I would always stay connected to, you know, you, you kind of part ways because they're getting married and having children or this person moved to Europe or, you know, everybody seems to be um, establishing their own lives. And at your age, there's so many different choices 
and so many different avenues to travel. And I was just kind of curious how that is for you. Well, in terms of people leaving or disappearing or not staying connected, that's been my whole life. So that's not any different. We moved around so much and I've moved around so much. I mean, both both in my childhood and in my adult life. Um, I think I'm the one that's initiating a lot of that. <laughs> I'm the one who goes away. A lot of my high school friends stayed in our hometown. Um, you know, and I went away for college. Uh, so that, I always want people to stick around, but I'm kind of used to that not being the case of having, having kind of bosom friends for some chunk of time. And then they're not really anymore, you know, they become acquaintances or they become people that I talk to every once in a while. Um, what was the other part of that question? Oh, so many trajectories. Yeah, I mean, that's my big challenge right now. So many trajectories. <laughs> um, you know, I have to, I have to make some choices and I'm, and I'm kind of, I've always kind of just kind of gone along with whatever starts to show up which like I said before, right now, it looks like my life is going to New York every few months. Um, but I think I'd like to make some more choices rather than just saying yes when things arrive. But I've I've been having a hard time too that, you know, I, I applied for a little art studio residency here in Portland and I and I thought my application was really good and I didn't get it. And, and then I've been thinking a lot about that. I've been thinking a lot about um, all the things that I've applied for and all the things that I've tried to get and how often I get rejected. And then the things that I do get, I mean, you know, grad school notwithstanding, I did, I did apply for that. So, and I did obviously get it. Um, but most of my employment, most of, most of my jobs and projects I've gotten not by applying, but by being recommended or somebody talking to somebody else. Um, Morning Machine, this project that is my favorite thing right now and, and might be the big thing that I do. I mean, it's, it's a little too early to tell where it's going, but I would love to do it full time if that was a thing. Um, you know, I got involved in that project because one of the people leading it was the ex-girlfriend of one of my mentors, and they got a catch-up coffee together one day to talk about what they've been up to, and she mentioned the project, and he said, and that she was looking for people, and he said, oh, I have a person for you. You know, this projection design job I got because this theater director posted on Facebook and said, hi, does anybody know a projection designer? And one of her friends tagged one of my collaborators from Morning Machine who tagged me. So it was, this, you know, two steps removed. She doesn't even know Nick. She knows, you know, and he, you know, and I just responded because I thought, well, why not? Let me see what this is. And she gave me her phone number. We had a short call. We had a cough. We had a short coffee and within you know 30 minutes she just gave me your hand she said you're hired <laughs> so I don't know um it's not really I'm kind of rambling but I, I I'm I have this sense that I, I'd really like to make some choices and I'd really like to like make a plan and people talk about five-year plans and visioning and all this stuff and applying for stuff and putting yourself out there and every time I try to do that it's nothing comes out of it and the things that seem to come to me are completely unrelated and so I wonder yeah there's so many paths but like are the paths choosing me or am I choosing the paths so that's my answer which I was kind of rambling I don't think it's answering your question but but I'm certainly in that moment where I, I you know I don't really know what's next and it feels like 
maybe I just have to wait and see. I think we all have experiences through life that we wonder how the heck did that happen? <laughs> Where did that come from? That, you know, it's either serendipity, you know, or happenstance, or it just doesn't feel like it was chosen, but somehow we make it work. So I think life is full of those situations for most people, unless you live a very simple, unless you live a very simple existence in which probably, you know, it can be carved out in a very specific way. But when you're trying to be creative and, you know, you're doing creative projects, I think being able to predict exactly how things are going to go or what opportunities arise is probably your mom. Your mom probably knows better than the rest of us, but uh, with that, but I would imagine having a creative, um, a creative side like that is not one that is very predictable necessarily. I would like to introduce uh, another thought into this, um, and yeah, it's very interesting how life is unfolding. <laughs> um, it's, it's coming from not knowing, like, even if I think I know <laughs> to, to be able to let that at least sit aside and, and coming from that place that doesn't know on a cognitive level, but knows everything, so to say. So when I'm in a good way, I'm, I try to come from that place that I not like, I don't know and I have to know and uh, things like that, but like who cool, are not knowing and, and surrender to that. And then um, go with my impulses that come from there. Not every impulse is, is like that, but, but out of that space. And, and then life can unfold because it comes from some deeper place that, that knows what might be good for me or what's really, they really need to, to do. Like, yeah. So, for example, this, this, I told you that I'm doing that fitness training. Um, I mean, I never, ever thought of anything like that. Uh, yoga, yes, and things like that. But uh, walking. But all of a sudden, it was clear, I will never do it if I'm not, don't have peers. I will never do it if I don't have kind of a planned thing. <laughs> and so I'm doing the certification in order to do it for myself <laughs> because I don't take myself uh, that, um, yeah, that important to, to do it mostly just, just do it because it's good for you. So there is this, this thing around it. And all of a sudden, for example, that firm I was talking about, uh, so you learn it so you can teach it, us doing this. And all of a sudden, there is maybe a project coming up for 40 people to set up some fitness. And they, they are really, they are in labor, <laughs> I would say. They have... They, they create 2,500 meals per day. And um, so it's, it's heavy to, to just get the noodles out of the water <laughs> and into a sieve. Um, so they need a strong back and, and things like that. So, yeah. And then I'm sitting there smiling and think, I, I mean, Two weeks ago, I couldn't, or even an hour before that, I, I couldn't imagine that something like that could happen. But it's consistent with, with what we have been talking about last year 
to do more for their health and to ask, uh, yeah, be together with a insurance company with the fitness uh, studios and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's an example, but for me to listen to that voice that comes out of that not knowing, um, that's a, when I listen to, to my life, when I see what happened, yeah, when we adopted our middle daughter, it was just a thing of five minutes maybe to, to have that choice. And if I have to wear something, I can take hours. <laughs> so little things I can, but the really important things, they take don't take much time. They come from that place. I was just thinking about last Friday when we talked at the Brunnen about exactly the same thing about uh, the inner voice, listening to your inner voice, being amazed by that and uh, following it. So it's, and uh, the woman who just moved to Hungary uh, because of that inner voice. She doesn't speak Hungarian, she still has to learn it. So it's amazing how people trust their inner voices. Yeah. That's funny. I, I was just thinking about the kind of choices and change that um, I've made, especially when I was younger. Um, and really now decades later, recognizing more and more what the implications were of that, or, you know, it, it takes a long time. If you make a big change, I, I moved from the East Coast where my whole family lives to the West Coast by myself. Um, so I'm still processing that decades later, like why, how, what happened, you know, the, the implications that kind of, it sets uh, a ripple throughout your life. So some change uh, continues to ripple uh, for a long time and some change comes to a conclusion. But yeah, Monia, I was just thinking about that. You know, you, you sometimes just don't know where that kind of change is going to take you. And it, it takes a long time for it to reveal itself. In six, 1968, when I was just two, three months pregnant, uh, I moved to New York. And there was just my husband and me. And yeah, and this is still, uh, my children were born there. So, and they have, the, the way they approach other people is still the American way. So they are very open and curious and inquisitive and not like me. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting more and more like a monk. <laughs> but yeah, but I wouldn't want to miss one minute of this time. Although it was rather, sometimes it was rather strenuous. Yeah. Well, as lovely as the life of a monk must be, change is not something that strikes me as, you know, central to their lives, <laughs> maybe <laughs> internal change. But certainly uh, when you think of somebody who makes that kind of a commitment, uh, change is not exactly at the top of the list of what I think about. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I guess it's uh, whether you mean external change or internal change. And some, some, sometimes they probably go hand in hand, but other times they are completely different. And I guess I'm now in this, we don't change much on the outside, but we are internally, we do have quite 
serious changes here. Yeah. I'm trying to be lighthearted <laughs> about it. Yeah, we are almost at the end of our hour. If you want to add something important to change, future changes or how something you... unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> unimportant, okay. I have to um, make an immediate change. I have a, a new <laughs> a new <laughs> class that starts at 10 o'clock. Oh, um, okay. So love to all. And um, I really love this topic and I love all of you. And um, it's great to see Beatrice. I haven't seen her or heard from her for weeks and weeks. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you, Heidi, for <laughs> keeping me connected to my family members. <laughs> um, so love to all and uh, keep a light heart and see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> all right. All right. Nice. Check out a little like. Oh, yeah. I think I want to to go back to what Munya said at the beginning to see like the body deteriorating <laughs> and and just yeah that's the way it is and for me that was one of the reasons um, to see that my muscles deteriorate and I said I don't want to fall down and break my legs and or hip or whatever so I want to have more muscles to support me. And it's going to be like it is. So I'm, I, I don't, I cannot avoid death, but I could just support myself not being, having to be in the nursing home as many people that broke their legs and then couldn't go home again. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, it's an interesting topic, and I think the, the, this internal, even if it's a biological change, is a lot, and a lot more than people think. Yeah. So. How to die healthily, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I need to do some change here that's requested because my two black uh, beasts they came up. I don't know if you noticed that because they try to tell me that they are hungry. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You some some to... other remark or from check out. No, I just want to say thank you, um, Gertrude, for sharing that. You just reminded me of the five Tibetan rites, mm. the fountain of youth. And it's also an internal and biological and internal and external journey by just doing those five uh, exercises every day. And it's just the strength that comes from inside you and the strength that you build up is just incredible and you literally stay young. So thank you, Gertrude, for reminding me of that. I must start doing that again. <laughs> uh, and I just, I just remembered the Hansi Freinacht, the metamodern uh, nemesis. <laughs> Uh, he claims he had he has now on Kindle it's not printed yet uh, twelve commandments in allusion to Jordan Peterson's uh, twelve rules of life, and he says let your exercise be a prayer. Maybe that's something for you. Too. <laughs> 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 okay. Can't you just take a bottle of water? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the prayer is, is let it be over quickly. That's yeah. the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, you. And, and then oh, Gertrude, you need to to, to to close the session because I guess oh, okay. The, okay, good. I just hope to be healthy next time. <laughs> Speaking of healthy. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, ladies. Bye-bye.